Good morning, guys. Days with Jordan the Lion. I woke up with this guy laying in my arms. Good morning, Jaw. Well, good morning, Lionheart. It's 9 a.m., but it feels like 7 a.m., and uh, I have to go work a Super Bowl party from 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. And uh, you know what's funny? They're literally right next door to one of the uh, places I've vlogged before, Carol Lombard's old house, the one that she lived in when uh, she was dating Russ Colombo. So if you missed that episode, as I'm walking by, I'll just kind of retell it. But uh, yeah, I was looking forward to this because it's kind of a ritzy neighborhood and everything, but everybody that I worked with last night that worked this party last year didn't really have great things to say, but 10 hours of a work day is a 10 hour work day. I'll take it when I can get it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the vlog today. Today's all about the carpenters. Not the ones that build houses and whatever. Karen and Richard. Well, here's the house that I told you guys about. This is the one that uh, Carol Lombard moved into after her and William Powell got a divorce. And she was dating Russ Colombo until Russ Colombo had an accidental gun go off and ricochet around a room and kill him. But uh, she was living here when she started dating and having an affair with a married Clark Gable. And the reason she moved out of here was because uh, she lived right on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, it was kind of not inconspicuous. So she ended up moving kind of out to Bel Air. And uh, that's where... Her and Clark would have their rendezvous until she would eventually buy Clark the uh, the big ranch out there in Encino that I went to on my very first vlog. So let me get to work now. That's where I gotta work tonight. Wowza. That big knocker, that's so cool. They have an inflatable mechanical bowl station. So awesome. Well, today I came to Downey, Downey, California. And you really can't come to Downey without paying homage to the carpenters. And the first place that I wanted to go to was this place. Actually, I thought this was pretty cool. This was, uh, as you can tell, this has only just begun. This building is an apartment building that Richard and Karen Carpenter purchased together as a financial investment when the Carpenters really started taking off. And uh, in honor of the Carpenters, they've kept the same names. I just thought that was so cool, you know? Now, not only is there the only just begun, but they also purchased this one across the street that I was standing in front of, and that's the close to you. I was kind of trying to stay out of the way because uh, we're getting a massive glare over here. There it is. There's the close to you. I'm just trying to get a little out of the out of the sun, but you know it's kind of crazy because my sister and I get along really well now. And not that we didn't ever like really get along, but we were like most brothers and sisters and we bickered and fought about nonsense and just to think of a brother and sister being able to uh be songwriters together and in a band together make music together and then financial partners it's really in kind of an homage or kind of a tribute to what a great family they had they were able to be this close and so there's the close to you Well, you also knew I wasn't going to come to Downey and not put Karen and Richard Carpenter's house on here. Now, this is the famous house that was on the cover of Then and Now. You remember there was like a... The red car was kind of in the bottom part of the screen, but this was where Richard and Karen grew up and started writing music, started making music, and uh, this is... Subsequently, kind of the, the place that Karen kind of died. I know she, she died in the hospital, but this was where her and her mother were living, and she was kind of being taken care of by her mother, 
and uh, they used to. You guys know, probably if you know anything about the carpenters, part of the history is that they had bought the house next to it and they kind of conjoined them and that became their workspace, studio, kind of their creative outlet, creative artistry section, rehearsal studio, pretty much everything. And that was right here. But this monstrosity that is here now is not where they did all that. See what happened was in the 2000s there's a family that lived here and they still might I don't know for sure but they kind of bought this house they bought this property for the property they didn't care anything about the fact that it was part of the carpenters and they kind of got tired of people showing up and paying homage to the carpenters so they destroyed this part of the house and built this what in Los Angeles they call McMansions like these little mini mansions in suburban areas that don't fit and they built this here to kind of distract people from coming and then their plan was to as I understand it destroy the house and build a new house but I think there was just such a massive outcry they ended up not doing it and I guess at one point they they were cool enough because Karen's mom lived here until she died they were cool enough that they would invite people in show them around the house, show them where everything was because it's still kind of set up in the same manner and they would actually like give away signed posters that Richard Carpenter had left in the house. See when when the house was eventually sold, I believe it was sold in 1997, Richard sold it furnished. Isn't that weird? He sold it furnished and I don't know why this deer keeps staring at me but he sold the whole house furnished and since the family that was moving in didn't so much care about the carpenters, they were cool about letting people come in and see it and just kind of giving them items from it until people really took advantage of it and they said that they were having issues with people coming in and peering through the windows and peering and just really invading their space. And if you guys know anything about the way I do my videos, I, I try not to do anything anywhere remotely like that. Unless the place looks abandoned. I usually stay in the street or on the sidewalk across the street or the sidewalk in front and I don't I don't disturb people but I just felt it was so important if I was gonna be here I had to show you this house I mean I mean everything everything if, if you like my age I grew up watching the movie Parenthood with Steve Martin and I always remembered that scene Rick Moranis trying to win his wife back over by walking into her classroom singing close to you and my mom is a big Carpenters fan. She used to watch the Karen Carpenter story. And through her, I just, you know, discovered a real appreciation for the songwriting of the Carpenters and the history of the Carpenters. And I really wanted to come show you this. Um, like I said, this is the original house and this is all that's left because they destroyed what was the workhouse, the uh, studio section of it. But think of that. Karen and Richard Carpenter wrote all those classic songs here and unfortunately Karen died of anorexia we all know and just a sad thing now this being what used to be the studio on this whole lot they had these two lots together like I said the only thing I really do like about it is they have these pretty cool lions up here but it is pretty gaudy and I don't, it's not the houses, you can see there's a wall there now. They're not conjoined anymore, so. Looks like whoever once owned both properties probably sold them or built this for a family member or something if they still have it. How cool is this? I This is such a blast from the past for me because uh, I grew up near the uh, Dayton Air and Force Museum. And so like once a year our schools would take us there usually and, uh, and my parents would take me to go check it out. I was always into that stuff. Like I've always had uh, in my music and stuff, I've always had running themes of like spaceships and rockets and... And... Uh, kind of airspace kind of imagery 
And uh, they had these at the party, so I grabbed a couple, and I'm uh, super excited to try them here in a few days. Well, that was a pretty soul-sucking day of work for me. That was a long, long day, and uh, I don't even want to go into why I was miserable about it. Um, but I'm glad that you guys got to go see the Carpenter's House in Downey with me, because, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of surreal being in front of that house and realizing... Richard was, you know, just this musical prodigy, and he inspired Karen, and she wanted to learn an instrument. She decided to take up drums. They formed the Richard Carpenter Trio in that house. They won, like, the L.A. Battle of the Bands. Uh, they won, like, the Downey Talent Contest. They won all this stuff while living there, and then became busting out of this jazz trio into a pop culture phenomenon. And that's actually where Karen collapsed and pretty much died, too. So just a real, like, uh, just a real, like, moving moment being in front of that. And uh, I hope you guys got the same feeling getting to experience it. And just one of those cool things about living in Los Angeles is that there's always a 20-minute drive away from, like, something that can change your soul. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So... Hope you have a great day tomorrow. Thanks for watching Days with Jordan the Lion. Your buddy Jaws over there stretching. I brought him home some chicken, so he's super happy. He had a great night. And, uh, wow, Tom Brady did it again. From Hollywood, California. Good night.